I'm caffeinated, I'm invigorated, and I'm excited. All right. We're going to exit the fake start of the show that followed the fake, fake start of the show. And we're going to go into the real start of the show, which is now. Welcome to Copy That. It is Monday, July 26, 2021. I hope you're doing well. I hope your loved ones are doing well. And I hope you had a fantastic weekend. This is the show where three copywriters enter the Thunderdome and only one exits. No, we look at copy <laughs> while we drink coffee and use that caffeine to talk about copy. Is, the is this the first time you've actually had coffee on the show, Sean? Yes. <laughs> I thought it might be a cool like little game where uh, we would just go like on Amazon and look at things that are selling well and take a look at what they're doing with their copy. So I think we found like some things that we would like to look at. Product descriptions suck. They are a mindless, tedious task, but also it's really hard to write good ones if you don't know what you're aiming for. Because if you go too hard on the copy, the salesy side, you'll fail. And if mm -hmm. you go too light on the salesy side and you're not aware of what your products, your prospects are looking for, you'll also fail. I'll be honest, I've never written a product description before. We're gonna use okay. this as an opportunity for me to learn and for us to talk about like why this might be working, why this might not be working. But we would need to have some sort of, some sort of <laughs> metric by which we assess whether something is working or not. If we hmm. search on Amazon, newborn baby diapers, will this be one of the first things to come up? Because what we're essentially talking about is SEO, is the description applicable to what I'm searching for. So let's test that. And this will tell us whether this page, this product description, and this title is actually working. Who's the first? A hey, first choice is exactly what we were just looking at. So if you search for baby diapers newborn, you'll get this page at the top spot. We sort of got to like reverse engineer this, right? Because we we infer that this one is working well because it is on the like bestseller page or on the you know like most popular like top like top hit. So we can we can probably get some principles or lessons out of it that you can use. So let's look at the actual product description of. Baby diapers, size newborn, 128 count, Huggies Little Snugger. Huggies Little Snugger. How is that for a headline? I know exactly what that is. <laughs> How aware is the audience, do you think, of the people that are going to be buying these? Everybody knows what a diaper is, and so there's going to be absolutely very little a person can do in the marketing side to actually sell a diaper beyond their competition. This is the product description about this item. Huggies... Little snugglers, baby diapers, size newborn, fit babies, 35 plus pounds, 16 plus kilograms. Good copy, right? I said that jokingly, but I'm gonna be honest. For this purpose, that copy is amazing. Seriously, whom are we writing to? We're writing for prospects looking for just straight information about what they wanna buy. This is different if it's like clothing or things like that and you're writing for a robot. Gentle Absorb, so that's a unique mechanism, liner provides absorbent layer of protection with premium softness and breathability for sensitive skin. How many noun phrases are in this little bullet? Gentle Absorb liner is one. Absorbent layer, protection, premium softness, breathability, sensitive skin. So in one sentence, we have six very, very specific noun phrases if you look for diapers baby absorbent guess what this bullet is what allows this product to come to the top of that search huggies <laughs> pocketed waistband helps prevent diaper blowouts and contains the mess these are benefits hyper compressed yeah. noun phrases that have some very clear benefit leak lock system helps prevent leaks for up to 12 hours plus wetness indicator changes color when baby is ready for a diaper change. Look at those benefits, man. It prevents leaks, it's long lasting, it has a wetness indicator that tells you exactly when a baby needs a change. That's pretty cool. Fragrance free, lotion free, paraben free, 
free of elemental chlorine and natural rubber latex. If somebody searches for baby diapers, natural latex, now this is going to come up. Again, like the purpose of writing product descriptions these ways is trying to anticipate all the different things, all the aspects of the product and how those match with what people, real human people persons are going to be searching for. Umbilical cord cutout protects baby's belly button while it heals, preemie and newborn sizes. Ah, oh, big benefit, huge benefit. That is, I would say, an amazing product description and explains why this is the top thing when you search for baby diapers newborn. Do Huggies Little Snugglers diapers have fragrance? Huggies diapers are fragrance free. And notice how the copy doesn't say, no, they don't. That would be bad copy because that's not what people are searching for. No, they don't. People don't search for that. So the answer is phrased in a particular way to have the things that people search for. Can I show you something that is about to blow both of your guys' minds? It's something I just noticed. So this is the full product description. What is the first sentence here? Huggies, little snugglers, baby diapers are designed, nice passive voice there, for gentle mm -hmm. skin protection to help support clean and healthy skin. Keep that in mind. What is that sentence saying? The main benefit being focused on here is gentle skin protection to support clean and healthy skin. Skin, skin, skin. Skin, 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 skin. Let's go back to the other stuff we just looked at and see what is the first benefit they focus on. First bullet in the about the item. Huggies, little snuggers, baby diapers, newborn fit baby thing. And then the next thing is breathability for sensitive skin. I would not be surprised if a copywriter sat down and wrote this product description. And then the yeah. first benefit, probably decided by committee or focus group, was, oh, everybody's searching for, thinking about, wanting diapers that are all about healthy skin. Skin, skin, skin. Skin, 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 skin. Now, when we design the about us, the about this product is probably just this in order, broken down into bullets. Majama Warren, whom we had on the show recently, that, that replay is gonna be up on our YouTube channel, youtube.com, search for the copy of that show, where you can watch replays and other fantastic bonus content. He asked or had a point about, I thought passive voice was bad in copy. I wanna ask you guys this, if I had not drawn attention to the fact that this wasn't passive voice, would anybody here have noticed that? No. 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 I think it's fine to have passive voice sometimes. The process of passive voice involves a verb in the infinitive that has been shifted to the past and then via paraphraxis has been separated out with the verb to be. That's the technical definition of passive voice. And honest to God, I would say five to 10% of people on planet Earth could identify passive voice 100% of the time. It's fine in copy as long as you don't overuse this construction over and over and over again. If you use too much passive voice, things start to feel a little formal, like a little boring sometimes. It sort of reminds me of when, when people say like, you can't like say we in copy, like it always has to be like about you. But it's like, sometimes you just gotta say, we design diapers. And I, I feel it's the same with like passive voice use. It's fine sometimes, don't overdo it. I think these baby diapers, I think they taught us <laughs> a lot. And I was wondering, Rod, why don't you take us home? I was really happy that we found these, the, that I found these when we were thinking about hard descriptions because I do feel like it, it, these are kind of perfect in terms of demonstrating how you can have very hyper compressed bullets and just use those to build <laughs> out an entire basically promo that um, conveys the stuff perfectly. And also when you approach these for yourself, if you can write out a description, you can then use that and translate it into every aspect of the rest of the product description that like will create some good content. I would say either you write the product description first or you write the bullets first, one of the two, and then you can just use that to write everything else. I know for me, one of the harder things about writing product descriptions is that they're not sexy. And so if you look at the copy in this and throughout this entire thing, it's not these like very smooth flowing transitions. It's not these really like cute rhetorical techniques. It is just very front loaded, very compact. And so as someone who's approaching these things for maybe the first time or second time, or someone who's more experienced trying to do a one-off project, it will be very beneficial to sort of check your assumptions about what makes good copy going into it. If I were to sit down and like somebody hired me, they couldn't afford me. 
but if somebody hired me <laughs> to write a product description for something, the first thing that I would do is I would go find the top performing products in that niche, and then I would look and see, you know, one, what's working for them, but two, I'd probably also just look at their, the first thing I would look at is the large, the long form product description, not the bullets, and I would go, okay, what is the pattern here? And with the diapers, this sentence focuses on one benefit. This sentence focuses on the second benefit. This sentence focuses on the third benefit. This sentence, the fourth. And so if I were to write this after like five, six, seven benefits, then it gets mm -hmm. into like a few like fun features. And so that would be my, my pattern. I would say, okay, you know, benefit one, and then I would write what the benefit is. And then I would try to find the best way to, in a hyper compressed way, phrase or frame that benefit. Full stop, no transition. Second benefit, full stop, no transition. Third benefit. And then just literally build this out that way. To end this, I would like to play a cool little game with you guys. This whole page, including the graphics and all that stuff, and we, we determined you could, you could make this in Canva, right? Yeah. How much do you think you could charge for this page? There's the design, there's the mm -hmm. copy, which would be what you start with, and then there's these dynamic elements that you would code out. You can charge three different things for each of those facets of this page. What would you guys charge? I have no idea. If you're doing some like one-off project on Upwork, you could pretty easily, you could charge at least like 500 bucks for that. That would be pretty low ball, I think. Yeah, I, I'd say like 500 to like a thousand bucks for this. Yeah, I was thinking like around a thousand dollars for this. The reason why I asked is because like, think about that. Like if you can like take on those like, you know, small design skills, or if you hire someone that does that for you, if you package these things together, you can suddenly earn like, you know, between like a thousand, fifteen hundred. I think very frequently about what Lori did in, mm. in showing what she does, which is not only does she do the copy, the actual writing, She'll go to Canva and spend 15 minutes wireframing, like giving an example of what she wants the page to look like with the words yep. on them. And by doing that, she's able to command a much higher value for her services because one, a lot of the design work has already been done. And two, the writing, like it's, you're not just like trying to imagine the writing in context. Three, that's just really cool. Like it's yep. clearly yep. going to be more valuable than just somebody being like, Oh, here, here's my .doc file with no formatting. Let's take it home. Let's give a quick shout out to our Patreon subscribers. You know who you are. We love you. And we're really, really grateful for how much you love us. Everybody who's watching right now, have a lovely day. Go make that money. I hope that this was helpful in some way. And as always, leave us some feedback and let us know. If not, and uh, we'll never do this again. <laughs>